The U.S. government has never been in a more vulnerable position than right now, and the latest moves from Russia and China have sent shockwaves to Washington. U.S. politicians are witnessing a major strategic move from these two countries that could rewrite the entire global world order. Two weeks ago, Vladimir Putin traveled to Beijing to meet with China's President Xi Jinping in an important meeting to solidify the growing relationship between China and Russia. The last time we saw these two leaders come together and issue a joint statement was February 2022, when Xi and Putin famously said that there are no limits to the China-Russia relationship. But last week's meeting is even more important for several reasons. First, China and Russia have outlined their vision for a new world order. While the United States has been the global hegemic power for decades, everything is quickly changing. The United States and NATO are failing miserably in Ukraine. The US has isolated itself on the world stage by supporting an act of genocide in Gaza, and democracy has never been more unstable inside America with an upcoming choice of bad and worse in the 2024 U.S. election. What's even more incredible is the demise of the U.S. dollar in international trade. China, who was once the largest holder of U.S. Treasury bonds, has been dumping them like crazy in the past 18 months, while the Chinese central bank has been stockpiling gold. Following this meeting between Putin and Xi, another shockwave was sent to the U.S. Federal Reserve. China dumped a record number of U.S. Treasuries and agency debt bonds, worth a staggering $53.3 billion. Historically, this is the largest sell-off initiated by China ever recorded and occurred during the first quarter of 2024. There is a major financial story unfolding before our very eyes, because as this Business Insider article reveals, the US dollar has become so weaponized that central banks are snapping up politically neutral gold. As I'll explain later in today's video, Russia and China have a unique gold strategy that is truly changing the future of economic sanctions and international trade. Today's video sponsor is Lear Capital, and stay tuned to the end for a special offer from Lear on how you can also incorporate gold in your own investing portfolio. But first, we're going to break down everything you need to know about China and Russia's growing alliance and what this means for the future of geopolitics. Step 1. Building a New World Order it's no secret that China and Russia are aligning together in an effort to reshape the future global dynamics. But this new joint statement from Putin and Xi acknowledges the rise of major emerging countries and regions in the global south and provides China and Russia a pathway of actually shifting the global world order. The global south comprises countries in Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Incredibly, the Global South represents 88% of the world's population, and in fact, should be called the global majority. China has achieved incredible success over the past decade with its Belt and Road Initiative, conducting over $6 trillion in trade the past 10 years. China and Russia now feel the trend towards a multipolar world is accelerating. This shift, they argue, is redistributing developmental potential resources and opportunities in a manner favorable to emerging markets and developing countries. China and Russia issued an official statement on this trend and what it means for the United States. Countries that adhere to hegemonism and power politics are contrary to this trend, attempting to replace and subvert the international order based on international law with a so-called rules-based order. The term rules-based order is so frequently used by American political leaders, such as President Biden and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, that according to Professor Stephen Walt of the Kennedy School of Harvard University, it seems to have become a job requirement for a top position in the U.S. foreign policy apparatus. But the rules-based order is different from international law, and as I'll show later in today's video, both are being constantly violated by the U.S. government. China and Russia sent a message to the world that they will fully tap the potential of bilateral relations in order to promote the realization of an equal and orderly multipolar world and the democratization of international relations and gather strength to build a just and reasonable multipolar world. Now, it sounds strong on paper, but how exactly will China and Russia set out to achieve this long-term goal? They'll do so with a simple two-step process. Number one, opposition to neocolonialism and hegemonism. China and Russia firmly believe that all nations should have the right to independently choose their developmental models and political, economic, and social systems based on their unique conditions and the will of their people. This is a direct contradiction to the U.S. belief that all countries should embrace America's model of a liberal democracy. 
While the U.S. goes around the globe installing coup governments and forcing regime change, China and Russia will go the opposite route and allow all countries to determine the political system that best works for their people and society. Number two, adherence to the UN Charter. Now you might be thinking, how can Russia claim to adhere to the UN Charter with its military conflict in Ukraine? I'll answer that question in a moment, but first, let's review why the UN Charter was actually created. In 1945, the UN Charter was created to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. But one of the biggest historical violators of this charter is the US government, with the five most recent US presidents all violating the charter with the use of force. It started with Clinton and the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia in 1999. George W. Bush launched an illegal war against Afghanistan. Obama did the same with Libya in 2011. Donald Trump followed suit by bombing both Syria and Iraq. And just one month after Joe Biden was inaugurated as president, he continued this legacy of violating the UN Charter by conducting airstrikes in Syria. And of course, we are witnessing in real time the efforts of the US government going against the UN with Israel's brutal war in Gaza. John Bolton, the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., even admitted the U.S. government considers the U.N. to be a tool of its foreign policy. There is no United Nations. There is an international community that occasionally can be led by the only real power left in the world, and that is the United States. When it suits our interests, and when we can get others to go along. When the United States leads, the United Nations will follow. When it suits our interest to do so, we will do so. From the time of its creation, the United States has manipulated the UN Charter, and this is where China and Russia see another opportunity. On the issue of Ukraine, here is the official statement from Russia. Russia positively evaluates China's objective and fair position on the Ukraine issue and agrees with the view that the crisis must be resolved on the basis of full compliance with the UN Charter. Russia welcomes China's willingness to play a constructive role in resolving the Ukraine crisis through political, and diplomatic means. Both sides believe that to steadily resolve the Ukraine crisis, the root causes of the crisis must be eliminated, the principle of indivisible security must be upheld, and the reasonable security interests and concerns of all countries must be taken into account. The U.S. is going down a very dangerous road with the prolonging of this war in Ukraine, and retired Army Colonel Daniel Davis recently came on the channel for an interview to reveal what the end result might be for the U.S. You want to talk about how we can't let Russia win. I hear that. I've heard that throughout the entire two plus years of war. We can't let Russia win. Otherwise, fill in the blank, all these bad things will happen. Here's what I'm saying is, if you keep going down this path of ignoring all these ground truth realities we keep talking about, not only will Russia win, we'll lose. But this is where things get interesting. As China and Russia have outlined five major strategic areas, they will collaborate and expand their relationship in the future to change the global world order. The first and most obvious area of cooperation is with the military, as the two nations will deepen military mutual trust and expand joint training activities with regularly conducting joint maritime and air patrols. Next, both countries will focus on economic development, as they will expand bilateral trade and improve investment cooperation. China and Russia will focus on developing advanced industries, including civil aviation, shipbuilding, automobile manufacturing, and electronics. The next area is energy cooperation. China and Russia will solidify their energy partnership with ongoing projects in civilian nuclear energy, thermonuclear fusion, and closed nuclear fuel cycles. With AI becoming a fixture in the tech world, the biggest future need of the world will be more energy companies and power grids. The fourth area of cooperation will be to deepen China and Russia cooperation within global organizations. Both countries are permanent members of the UN Security Council and will seek to expand this influence within the UN and other global organizations. Nations. The most important one, of course, being the BRICS alliance, which both countries will continue to enhance its influence in international affairs. But the biggest area of collaboration between China and Russia will come through an expansion in finance. Both countries will increase the use of local currencies and bilateral trade and encourage more two-way investment by issuing bonds in each other's financial markets. And we've actually began to see this play out in real time. As I mentioned at the start of this video, China, in line with their strategic shift away from Western reliance, recently announced it has dumped at least $53.3 billion worth of U.S. bonds in the first quarter of 2024. This move underscores China's intent to diversify its investments and reduce dependence on the U.S. dollar. Swiss economic expert Claudio Grass bluntly states the truth surrounding China's shocking move. It is a wise decision to diversify away from USD. Gold has outperformed USD bonds by 75% since 2021. In addition, the USD 
has been used for decades already as a political weapon and with the arbitrary confiscation of assets due to pressure from the U.S. government. It is obvious that the Western civilization is being destroyed by their own corrupted and rotten political system. Wow, these are quite the words from this Swiss economist. And once again, we are seeing this played out in real time. Earlier this month, Joe Biden approved a new $61 billion aid package for Ukraine. And inside this bill, it gives authorization for the US government to seize Russian state assets located in the US and send that money to Ukraine. It's a bold move that once again violates international law, but it opens the door to a new problem. Russia can do the exact same thing. And in fact, last week sees 700 million euros of assets from European banks, Unicredit, Deutsche Bank, and the Commerzbank. Everyone, these currency wars are only just the beginning, but it shows clearly why the demand for gold has risen so much in the past few years. Gold is seen as a politically neutral safe asset, which can be stored at home, and be insulated from sanctions or seizure. Central banks around the world accounted for one quarter of gold demand in 2022 and 2023 as the institutions bought over 1,000 tons of gold each year, according to the World Gold Council. But the buying spree hasn't stopped. The world's central banks continued to buy gold in 2024, snapping up almost 290 tons of gold in this first quarter, the strongest start to any year on record according to the council. Now, as many of you know, I've been an active investor in precious metals for many years, and owning physical gold is something that I think everyone should have exposure to in their investment portfolio. Today's video sponsor is Lear Capital, who I trust as my precious metals expert and sponsor of my show, because Lear has been helping investors like me purchase gold and silver for almost 30 years. They have over $3 billion in trusted transactions, thousands of five-star reviews, and are the only gold company with a 24-hour risk-free purchase guarantee. If you are doubtful about investing in gold, I want you to see this tweet from Elon Musk as he compares the US Federal Reserve to the bank from the famous Monopoly board game. What happens if the bank runs out of money? The bank never goes bankrupt. The banker may also issue new money on slips of ordinary paper. This is one of the most brilliant tweets from Elon because he speaks the truth. Whenever the US economy is in trouble, the Fed simply prints more money. But we've seen what this has done to the rampant inflation affecting every American consumer today and how the purchasing power of the dollar has declined so significantly over time. Honestly, the only way to battle inflation and protect your investments is offsetting some of your dollar investments with precious metals. Now, if you're interested to learn more, I want you to simply reach out to Lear Capital and they will send you a completely free gold and silver investor kit. This is a must read report that explains how the price of gold rises right along with our rising US debt and makes a great case for gold reaching $3,200 an ounce. With US debt hitting 34 trillion in printing, precious metals can be the difference maker for your savings and retirement. Call today and mention my name, Cyrus, and Lear Capital is going to gift you $250 in credit simply for just contacting them. Simply call 800-489-6450. That's 800-489-6450 or go to learcyrus.com. The deepening relationship between China and Russia marks a significant shift in global geopolitics. Their recent statements and actions underscore a shared vision for a multipolar world that challenges the existing US-dominated order. As they expand their cooperation across various sectors, the implications for global stability and the international balance of power will be profound. But as always, you can count on this channel to bring you the latest in geopolitical trends. I want to thank you all for spending time with me here today on YouTube. And if you're interested in learning more about how the Ukraine war will end, click here to watch my entire interview with retired Army Colonel Daniel Davis as he breaks down the truth about the end of the war in Ukraine. Everyone, thank you for your incredible support. We'll see you all in our next video soon.